Hi, I'm Judy Knight. My business is New Tricks, and I'm here tonight to have a conversation with two amazing women. And this is Rana Dietrich, from, who is an author, um, a speaker from Seattle, Washington. And this is my friend Callahan McDonough, who is an artist here in Atlanta. And they have an interesting, amazing story to tell that about a collaboration that they have begun this past year and this is the first time that they've actually met each other in person so I haven't heard the details so I'm excited to find out more about it so thanks for join us, joining us and so Rana where did how did your writing how did you get the idea for the writing or explain the process sure. of what you're doing and who you are you bet yeah. Well, I spend most of my time having uh, provocative conversations with women about God, which is a very volatile topic uh, that most of them, some enjoy having and others don't want to have at all. Uh, and I think it's a really important conversation. And so from a feminist perspective, I am constantly writing in ways that I hope will help us bring these two pieces together and be able to have good conversations about things that matter and that impact us in really dramatic ways. And so um, much of my training and my educational background has been in theology. And so I know biblical stories really, really, really well. Uh, and there's been a part of me that has, a, has had a uh, high level of aversion to them at particular parts in my life. And yet I have come to find them as dear companions, the women particularly. And so the stories of women in scripture have often been co-opted and have been told in particular ways that have laden us with shame and all kinds of things that haven't been helpful for us as women. And yet underneath all of that are these incredible, incredible tales that I feel have been lost and I want them told. So that's what I write, and my my idea here was that if we had images, if we could have art. Well, that, well let me ask you something mm -hmm. though. But you started writing them on on the website. Yes, and I blog. Yeah, so I've been blogging for probably seven years, uh -huh. uh, maybe longer than that now, maybe eight to ten, really. Uh, and my way of talking and what I've been talking about has shifted and ebbed and flowed over the years. But within the last three years, I've really been very focused on thinking about, Callahan and I were just talking about this, faith and feminism. Mm -hmm. uh, and can the two even coexist? Many would say, absolutely not. And I say, let's give it a try. <laughs> I think we can do it. So. And so the project that you started. Yeah, the project, the vision in my mind was, uh, would, is there a way for me to tell the stories of 30 women in scripture that would be redemptive, that would be engaging, that would be provocative, so that women would want to hear their stories. And what if I could add art to that? How would I do that? Mm -hmm. Who would that be? And that's where the next aspect of the story comes into play. Mm -hmm. And so Callahan, tell me how you got involved with this project of um, the sacred art or the stories of Eve? Or yeah. Um, I, um, uh, a couple of years ago, stumbled across uh, Rana's blog, and in fact, actually, I love to, to trace the uh, etymology of things, and it was really actually through you, because I was reading another blog you turned me on to, and on that, Rana was referred to. And I really loved writing, reading your writing, mm -hmm. and um, uh, what caught my eye was that it said, Faith, feminism, and telling God, the truth, and telling the mm -hmm. truth, and um, so those were all things that were important to me. And the more I read, the more I liked them, and I commented um, a number of times. I remember when you told me because then Callahan told me about you, and that's how I started <laughs> Isn't reading that your. Great? There's the virtual world, right? Mm -hmm. there. Yes, exactly. So awesome. Yeah. Yes, and and. Um, those are all things that are important to me, and I like that you were responsive and that you were um, very much um, out there and sharing your own personal process. And that included struggles with faith and uh, struggles with being a woman in this mm -hmm. contemporary society and then weaving in the elegance of the stories. Mm -hmm. So it really uh, spoke to my heart and uh, to my journey. Yeah. And so then what happened? How did you get involved? 
Um, well, uh, actually what happened is that um, Rana put out a call for artists mm -hmm. on Facebook. We're also Facebook friends yes. subsequently. And um, uh, I said, I'm interested. And I had recently been at a workshop with you where I had met another woman that Rana met and knew. And then Rana had already seen my art. And so there was this synchronicity. Mm -hmm. And Rana said, let's talk. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, I don't know, I heard this part of the right. story, but how was it for you when you started, when you put out the call for finding your well, artist? It was so gratifying. Like I knew that I was doing this. I wasn't going to be able to hire an artist or commission an artist to do this. So my hope was that someone would just be so intrigued by this that they would, on faith, say, sure, we'll give this a try and see what happens. Uh, and so Callahan and I got on the phone, and I remember getting off the phone after that first phone call, and I thought, oh, she'll be my friend forever. <laughs> um, I mean, we just have so many things that we could immediately talk about and so many places in our lives that overlapped that it was just deeply gratifying to... Was to she the only one? You know, I had other people that I had email conversations with. I bet I had 25 to 30 people respond to me by oh, the end of the day. I had that's lots amazing, of people isn't that responded. It? Yeah. And so I went and looked at other people's sites and then actually taught, once Callahan's name came back across my screen. Because you already knew? I knew who she was and I went, oh, I didn't even think of her. Of course. That's who it should be. How amazing. So, yeah. Yeah, that's great. Yeah. And so um, I had a couple of other things. Oh, okay. So... How's it been then? How did it come about or how did you start to collaborate on this? What's that been like? What we talk on the phone. Talk on the phone, but the, the structure that we agreed on was, that really was already built into the equation, was that Rana would write the narrative and from that narrative I would create a diptych, which is two panels that are one painting. They can function independently or jointly. And one would have your narrative, which I would also do a painting for. And the other would have my interpretation of the woman that she was writing the narrative about. And these are two of the paintings. And we don't have actually the narrative with us. But the narrative, I have a copy of the narrative, not right here. But so these are the paintings. And then each one has a narr the, the narrative mm -hmm. of of the um but if it, I can move to the side for a minute I can say where is this thing this little box it's back here um here. yeah the, yeah Judy these are the two pieces here and uh this is the first and this of course is Eve and so uh, I want Rana you to comment on this but my interpretation of it was of a woman that was anything but the source of evil for women and uh, really reached for her desire for the apple. And um, this is a quote from Rana's narrative. No doubt, no second guessing, a knowledge, a knowing no matter what. So I feel that is the exact antidote that is called for, for us to no longer be condemned as, condemned as the source of a story that started out badly. Ron, what would you add to that? Well, I would talk, I think, to some degree, just even about the process of having my words interpreted in art. I mean, it's oh, just yeah. a really powerful experience because I'm not an artist. Uh, so I recorded me telling Eve's story the way that I tell it and thinking through themes and aspects of it and sent that all to Callahan electronically and then I think you did three or four images the first time mm -hmm. uh, the second time we got faster with just the one uh, and so I mean just such a profound experience to see another person's expression of my words and but, my heart and my thoughts it's very very humbling and really powerful and Callahan and I have talked a lot before about the whole co-creative aspect mm. there's I think that there's nothing more exciting than that. I would agree. And I could not have expected that. I mean, I just had no way of knowing that that's what the experience would be. And it's just been wonderful. And, the, and it really is. The collaboration and the relatedness for me is so important. Mm -hmm. And a lot of doing art can be isolative. And I want it to be relational and I want work that goes out in the world mm -hmm. and matters and is accessible to many people and has a content that 
is important to me and this work in collaboration with you has that. Yeah. And I'm just amazed. My business, I create online presence uh, for people and let them have the ability to take their word and their, you know, have a voice in the world basically. And I think we live in a time, a day and time that it's an amazing opportunity. And so it's so much fun to, for me to see Callahan, who I've known, you know, actually get on the social media and meet somebody mm. all the way across the country that you connect like this. Mm -hmm. And it's, you know, people say, oh, social media, you're wasting your time. And there are a lot of people that do spend a whole lot sure. of time, you know, posting cat p pictures. But, um, but it's an, an amazing experience that you and all I think have created. It's particularly unique for women. Right? I think that social media is profound for women because it enables relationships and connections that we couldn't have otherwise facilitated nearly as easily. as It just lends itself so beautifully to that. Mm -hmm. And so for me, I mean, I've established amazing relationships, as I know both of you mm -hmm. have, with people on social media that I've never met but feel like they're dear friends of mm -hmm. mine because we talk about all kinds of things and are trying to build businesses together and are trying to be collaborative and share resources and all kinds of things and so when I have the opportunity to meet someone face to face it just feels like I already know them right because I've talked yeah. to them so many times so this is just such a gift to me to be able to be here with her well and it's a gift to me to have both of you here with me tonight so thank you so much um, and I look forward to more yes thank you too. Judy thanks yeah thanks, thanks.